Myvert was only the first victim of Darwinian Inquisition, a phenomenon that has broadened in scope and intensity in our day. Richard Milton, a science journalist, published a book in 1981 debunking Darwinian evolution and subsequently became the target of the Darwinian Gestapo. In his review of Milton's Shattering the Myths of Darwinianism, Oxford University atheist Richard Dawkins, who never had an original idea, by the way, devoted two-thirds of the review to attacking the publisher for daring to print a book criticizing Darwinianism. And the author, third, and the other third of the book, assassinating Milton's character. Dawkins said the book is loony, stupid, drivel, and referred to Milton as a harmless fruitcake who needs psychiatric help. Never dealt with the facts at all. Nope, nope. Dawkins has tried to have Milton blacklisted so that his scientific writings cannot be published. He has lied about him, calling him a secret creationist. He was successful in having the Times Higher Educational Supplement stop publication of one of Milton's articles. Milton observes, there is a strong streak of intellectual arrogance and intellectual authoritarianism running through the history of Darwinism. From Huxley and Charles Darwin through to Julian Huxley. We'll talk about him. Shattering the myths of Darwinianism. In 2007, astronomer Gonzalez, author of The Privileged Planet, was denied tenure at Iowa State University in spite of his excellent record because he believes in intelligent design. Hmm. In Slaughter of the Dissidents, Jerry Bergman, uh, in, in, uh, a professor in, in human biology from Columbia Pacific University and Ph.D. in measurement and evaluations from Wayne State University tells the shocking truth about killing the careers of Darwin doubters. In the introduction, he says this, In this fascinating book, Dr. Jerry Bergman himself, a victim, chronicles the history of modern religious persecution in America. A highly respected, credentialed, and published professor, he was denied tenure and subsequently fired immediately because of his creatious belief in writings. Dr. Bergman describes numerous other cases, often concealing names to protect those who do not wish, wish to risk losing their current positions as common means of persecuting those with minority views. What is this? This is the Darwinian Gestapo. Why? Because they don't want you to tell the truth about Darwinian evolution. Because it's their religion, it's their faith. Bergman testifies this, a factor that, listen to this, a factor that moved me to the creation side was the underhanded often totally unethical techniques that evolutionists typically used to suppress dissonant, dissonant ideas, primarily creationism. Rarely did they carefully and objectively examine the facts, but usually focused on suppression of creationists, denial of their degrees, denial of their tenor, ad hominem attacks, and in general, irrational attacks on their person. In short, their response in general was totally unscientific and one that reeks of intolerance, even hatred. He wrote, Persuaded by the Evidence, Chapter 4. So what's going on here? Well, the same thing that Darwin's bulldog started, that's still going on. Why do you think they're scared to debate men like Kent Hovind and other men like that? Why, are, why do you think they're scared to debate and talk to those men like that? These big-name guys won't do that. They won't. Why won't they? Because evolution cannot hold up to scrutiny. It cannot. It becomes a faith based religion. Yep. 